was gonna tell her, but it's one of those things where she's doing her thing over there, and so it's like I trying to get involved too much. Hi guys, um, <clears throat> I look crazy. I sound crazy. I'm <coughs> a bit ill at the moment, and I'm kind of losing my voice. My voice is going really hoarse. I mean, we all have like a deep ass man voice anyway, but this is like a deep ass man, vo deep ass, deep ass man voice, like times ten because I'm ill. So um, yeah, and I look crazy because I've got um, I need to finish this wig. But basically, guys, I wanted to come on here today and just have a chit chat with you guys. I feel like I never really talk much on here. Where's my scissors? Hang on. Get him. So I don't. I feel like I don't really talk to you guys much about stuff. <coughs> Anything. I feel like I just come in here, kind of do my videos, and have like occasional chit chat. Or I chit chat about my life, but I never talk about like current affairs and stuff which is strange because i'm really into current affairs like i'm always tweeting about current affairs but i feel like my youtube doesn't really reflect that so i thought i'd do that today and today i'm just going to talk about um top boy and kind of my thoughts on top boy kind of a discussion open discussion for you guys a lot of discussion around it so we're going to talk about that but first and foremost we got to get into our sponsors so the hair that i'm currently cutting the lace off of is from kalai hair they were kind enough to send me four bundles of 26 inch deep wave and I just made it into a wig myself. I'm just actually cutting the lace off right now as we speak. Um, the hair is like, one thing about the hair when I first like, kind of <coughs> took it out of the pack that I kind of noticed was that the hair is really, really soft, which is really good because sometimes I find that you get like this like dry matted feel from curlier hair texture sometimes. Deep wave is one of my favorite hair textures. If you want like, um, like the curly kind of look without the maintenance of like really curly hair deep wave is one you should go for and kalai hair do really really good um deep wave kind of hair um and the reason i'm kind of happy to work with kalai is because um one of my friends buys from them regularly she buys their i can't remember what she buys she buys their curly curly hair like the curly texture and it looks really nice, she really enjoys it. So I thought if they can do well with the curly texture, they could probably do well with the deep wave because once you've mastered the curly textures, you kind of mastered the other ones. They're, they're a lot harder. So yeah, we're just gonna play around with this hair. Um, I glued this unit together. I don't um, sew my units anymore. I oh, not enough in this one. Sew my units anymore. I glue them on simply because I get like a lot of hair sent to me all the time. And before I was even working full time, I was struggling to keep up with always making wigs. And now that I work full time, I just don't have the time. Like, no one's gonna spend their whole weekend sewing up, sewing up wigs. Like, this is quick and easy. It takes me like an hour or two to do. Oh, this is cute. An hour or two to kind of do, and the wig is done. So, yeah, I'm gonna do a video if you guys really want me to on how I glue my wigs. It's pretty simple, but if you guys really want a video, let me know. And I'll show you how I make them by gluing them. Oh, this is cute. I plucked this quite well, actually, I think. So, yeah, just let me kind of know and I'll kind of get that sorted for you. Right now, I'm just getting... Oh, this wig is also glueless. So, um, I don't... <coughs> because I've had closures, I've kind of just felt like, why am I gluing these? Like, I just don't want to glue my wigs anymore because... Like, not that I'm losing my edges, my edges are still intact, but like everyone's complaining about how glue is making them lose their edges. And I really don't want to be next, so I've just decided to kind of <laughs> quit while I'm ahead and stop gluing. Especially with closures, you don't need to glue them. Like, I, like, I just, yeah, unless it's a wig that I kind of like, like a 613 wig, where to help them melt, you might need to glue it, I might. But even then, I'll try like my best to make it glueless. So, yeah. Um, this is cute. I feel like I want to try to add a baby hair to this, but like, I'm, baby hairs for me are so hit and miss. I told you guys it's hitting this for me. 
and today's been a complete mess but we're just gonna leave that we're just gonna leave that I need this wig alone and just to be happy with how it is at the moment because I feel like if I play around with it more I mess it up but yeah like I said it's the Kalai hair 26 inch 26 inch 26 inch 26 inch with 20 inch 20 inch 20 inch three part closure in deep wave just seeing how long it comes up to me so deep wave comes up to like here on me in 26 inch which is just above my waist so yeah in case any of you are sort of wondering. I was doing my makeup and like halfway, not halfway through, like I baked now, but like part way through I was just like, you know what, I might as well come on here and start talking up the things because I have not filmed enough. I'm trying to be more consistent, as I said in my last video, like um, I have to take every opportunity to film all I can, so I thought why not film today? So we're going to talk about Top Boy and kind of have a discussion about it, see how you guys feel. I kind of want to open the floor for discussion, so let's get into it. Been a huge discussion about representation and um, kind of like how people feel like, oh, it sets us back. You know, it's not everyday gang violence, gang violence, gang violence, you know, on TV. That's all we're good for. Like, there's always a budget for gang stories about black British people, blah, blah, blah. And I thought loads of ways about that. Like I, I approach it very differently. Like if you're saying that because I've seen some people say that because they're kind of worried about how they, and when I say they, I mean white people, will see us as a result of these things, then what you're saying is completely invalid. But if your concerns are kind of rooted in how how will white people see us, it makes black people look bad. Whenever you keep putting these gang documentaries on, it gives them a reason to stereotype us. Um, I'm not being funny, but we've been stereotyped way before we even gave them legitimate reasons to do so. It's kind of just how it works living in the white man's world. And furthermore, when we have all these crime documentaries about white men or um, going around um, killing and raping people and chopping their bodies up and spreading it around England in all these like true crime documentaries, um, I don't see anyone shouting about how they look bad and how they have to kind of answer for it as a community. So why should we? Um, black people are not a monolith. So yeah. And kind of adding to that as well, like as much as you don't want the gang things kind of put out there, I think sometimes a lot of black people who just don't necessarily have active involvement in, sh in on the roads kind of and don't, um, like they might have even grown up in the hood but they never had active involvement and kind of always been on the straight and narrow don't realise that this is actually a lot of people's real stories like have you not seen the news all these like stabbings and all the, the rise in knife crime like, have you not clocked at this point this is actually people's real stories so why not put it out there because it is the story and I feel like Top Boy does a good job of approaching the story in like a not in like the obvious like gang gang, gang. like for example like if you take a film like The Intent which is by the way one of my like worst saving films ever like such a terrible movie but i love the film because it's so terrible it's so bad but like, i can say like the intent for example i feel like the intent kind of attacks the gang violence things very one dimensionally like we don't really have um a root reason as to why these young men are actually out here killing people like they're kind of just doing it but top boy does a good job of kind of especially if you look at the stories of like acts for example whose mum is having issues with immigration she's been here for 18 years and all of a sudden she's being told that she's not allowed to be here anymore and she can't even make have like a livelihood here that's real life stories as well it attacks the topic of immigration whilst also showing how someone who's innocent and is on the straight and narrow can easily kind of descend into that lifestyle it's really sad but it's the truth and that's what i kind of like about top boy to kind of reduce it just to a film about gang violence is just very obtuse to me like there is more to it than that and if you can't see it that way i'm just gonna assume you just don't want to see it that way at this point like you're just part of the problem of not wanting to see it any other way than that because <coughs> it's way more than just people in gangs killing each other like there's a lot of that but there's like a story behind it or if you look at jamie's story um like his story of his pa although there's other jamie's story is interesting because it's really good it shows you how like Jamie's meant to be like this cold hearted like guy rising through the ranks doing what he needs to do to kind of make his money and keep maintain his empire but we also see his soft side and see that this guy has suffered like he's got a lot on him like he's like 22 23 years old I think and has the responsibility of looking after two people 
both his younger brothers because his parents both passed away and it's going to all be left to him. Even though I must add, yeah, can I just ask anyone who knows more than I do, how realistic is that? Because um, in real life, would Jamie be expected to be them two's legal carers? That was a bit like a loop in the story for me last was a bit like, um, this doesn't sound right, but you know, story purposes. But yeah, Jamie looking after his two brothers by himself and it's like you see Jamie go from like this cold hearted sometimes you see Jamie as this like clever, cunning like gang member rising through the ranks doing what he needs to do very calculated very like almost like a to, sorry to compare the shows but like a James St. Patrick type of character and then we quickly kind of switch over and see him as like a family man who will do anything to protect his family who does the best that he can to provide he even goes to like Stefan's parents evening and stuff like that so you kind of see a different side to him in that sense <coughs> which is like really good and kind of like I said adds to the whole thing of not approaching gang violence in black British culture in a very one dimensional way and kind of showing the real issues like even touching on gentrification like when the shame came out and like Hackney was so different I think that's they're based in Hackney right or like East London he's walking through Hackney he's gone to the coffee shop and they're like asking him oh and he's like, I'm on a coffee. They're just like, oh, our special of the day is this. And he's just like, okay. Like, because it's real life. Like, certain areas. Like, I grew up, I spent so much time growing up in North London. So, which meant I was around Hackney a lot. And the Hackney that we see today is not the Hackney that I knew when I was growing up. Like, sometimes I go to Hackney and feel like I don't belong there anymore. Like, the hipsters have taken over. Gentrification is an absolute mad thing. Like, I feel like I don't belong there no more. And even if you look at areas in the South, like, when I did my Represent Radio interview, I went to Brixton and it was like, I walked out and I was just like, am I the right Brixton? This isn't the Brixton that I used to know. It kind of touches on those type of topics and kind of brings a light on those kind of things and I think that's what it does a good job of doing, like approaching something that could have been done one dimension, like focusing on something like gang violence but also touching on many things and kind of like, it's relevant to today's discussion because there's this issue of these politicians at the top kind of talking about gang violence and talking about, oh my God, there's knife crime. I know, let's just increase the number of stops and searches. Or I know, let's have chicken boxes that have anti-knife crime campaigns on them. It's just like, that's the problem. The people at the top don't want to attack the root issue. And the root issue is ultimately poverty. Like it's not, and I feel like, at this point, I feel like they're playing dumb as well because I feel like enough people have gone on enough panels and said the exact same thing, like it's poverty, it's got nothing to do with increased police activity, it's got nothing to do with that, it's just poverty. And these kids have no way out and that's perfectly demonstrated in Top Boy. So it kind of does a good like job of like adding to the social commentary of today sort of. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Although I will also add on that, on that note that I do understand people that are also saying like as much as like you know we're not caring about the view of white people and they're saying oh no more crime kind of stuff i think it's also important to acknowledge that and i've discussed this before how i've said already that i'm very tired of seeing like black stories on tv where it's just about the <coughs> black struggle all the time like it's just very tiring i'm tired of seeing black people suffering on tv that's why i haven't watched when they see us because i just can't watch it like i understand what ava ava is it ava duvernay is doing and she's doing a great thing trying to get the story out there but i'm kind of tired of always seeing the same narratives like i would like to see um more black british stories or just black stories in general black british in particular just black people living their lives like nothing to do with suffering nothing to do with like anything black in particular just them being normal characters living normal lives and where their story has nothing to do with race that's why i like um shows like insecure or like blackish are really important because it's just black people living their lives outside of, they still talk about black issues but it's not just like oh my god they're black oh my god they're suffering there seems to always be a budget for that so yeah i kind of um agree in that sense like i do get people's frustrations in that sense i think the most interesting character development for me um is dress's um character development it's just a bit nuts because 
The dress went for like top shot art on the road, calling all the shots, that guy, top ranking guy, because he was like the shade and Sunny's like second right hand man, to just like your neighborhood druggy, and it's just crazy because who said this? Someone said this on my someone said this to me a long time ago and I can't remember who it was to credit them. They said to me like because I'm not familiar with this kind of stuff and they said to me like, Al, do you know like you might see like these random black crackheads on the road or these random black druggies on the road and you don't even realise that they were like the man back in the day and like look where they are now. And it's like seeing just kind of reminds me of being told that like people would look at him kind of like, like the local like even like a local bum, like even if you just look at how he's living, like the local kind of bummy guy that's always just kind of on the street, kind of doing nothing, not knowing that back in his day he was that guy. Like, Drizzle was doing some serious dirt with Deshane and Sully, and it's like, rah, look how they might have kind of fallen, sort of. And it's just a bit, it's it's, 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 it's nuts. Maxine, this is how he's gone for a stroke, and like, um, like, yeah, he's just, just not that guy anymore. And it's kind of sad, like, it's sad to see that like, you hate to see it. But at the same time, I like that they've done that because, let me just do my lips, hang on. I'm glad they've kind of done that because it just shows you, like, this stuff doesn't last forever. Like, look at how much work George was mashing in back in the day, like, how much dirt he was on. All the stuff he did, the people he hurt, the, the the drugs he sold, and all that. But it's like, what did it really amount to in the end? Nothing. Sorry, big ass bird just flew over. Like it didn't really amount to much in the end. Like it didn't mean anything in the end. Like he had like couldn't even work properly because he was still popping pills because of his stroke, and then like his arm wasn't functioning well. So it's like it just kind of amounted to nothing in the end, like nothing at all. Or even like on the subject of it all amounting to nothing, look at like Deshane and Sully. It's just interesting with Deshane the most because like Deshane went from being that guy, like that guy that he was feared, you don't mess with Deshane, he was top shot at you, he could say the word and your life is over. But look, he's, he's gone to Jamaica now and he's met someone badder than him. Someone who's like putting a gun to his head, bossing him around, telling him, do this, do that, or I'm gonna kill you. Like, it's nuts. It's really nuts, but it just goes to show like this whole thing, the idea of like, there's always somebody better than you. There's always someone more on dirt than you are, and people should never forget that. Especially when they've kind of earned their stripes and they've kind of done a lot of stuff, start to feel a bit invincible. And um, <laughs> I think Deshane quickly got humbled, even though he ended up killing Sugar in the end. He like quickly, quickly got humbled and reminded like, son, this is a different, a different kettle of fish for that. This, this, this ain't London. We don't run these streets. Um, Jamaica's small, so <laughs> boy. So yeah, it's just interesting. It's interesting to see how like the shame is triggered by this idea of just like the shame and Sully are like on two different paths. I feel like. I feel like we're gonna see Sully slowly wants to just be like, you know what, I don't wanna do this anymore. Especially because I feel like Jason dying changed Sully. Like you saw kind of like, he was really kind of changed already coming out of prison, but I feel like Jason dying was like the final straw for him. And then like not seeing, like being revoked access to his daughter because of the, his, the life that he's living and like, um, him feeling like, seeing like someone he used to be like, he used to run around with, so his ex Tasha used to run around with, has kind of like moved on, everyone's moved on, she's moved on and found a guy that's nothing like him, that like kind of just is a normal, regular nine to five working guy, and she's moved on and she's having a family and he's kind of still stuck in the same place. I think, let me brush off my hair a little bit. I think that's kind of triggering him a little bit, like, right, look, look at kind of like what I've kind of left behind, that like everyone's moving on and that so much has changed. Like, is this even worth it? And you can kind of see, like, he even says to Shane at the end, like, okay, yeah, we're gonna win this war. That's that's great. I have no doubt in my mind we're gonna win this war. But um, there'll be another one, like, and another one. Like, what do we do next? I think Sully's starting to see, like, this just isn't. This isn't. 
it? Like, are we gonna keep doing this forever? And I thought Deshane was kind of going along that same path because he kind of came out kind of saying I'm 36, no woman, no children, nothing to myself, another amount to nothing. But he's kind of just, I feel like Deshane hasn't learned. And I feel like um, with Deshane, I remember leaving like season <coughs> two of Top Boy feeling like, nah, F Deshane, he needs to go. Like, I, Deshane needs to get his comeuppance. But the start of this season, I was a bit like, oh no, Deshane's changed. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, I like Deshane now. I think Deshane's learned his lesson. He's a bit different. He's developed. And the very ending of how they did Jamie just reminded me why I didn't, oh, I wanted Deshane dead in the first place. Like, he needs to go. He's getting on my nerves. Like, Deshane needs to get his, because he, he, oh, he's such a conniving, selfish, like, all in a bid to kind of just this obsession of being on top that will get back on top, will be on top. Grow, grow up. Like, who even cares about people like 36? like trying to take down a younger's empire because you can't keep up with what he's doing and you send him jail and try to get him to work for you because you want to keep up with what he's doing keep up with the youngers but i guess the shame is one of them is an example of them olders on ends that just don't let go that live on and cling on by what they used to do and what they used to be and blah 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 but the problem with that is that the youngers of today don't care about legacy like that they're different like when i was younger I'm better talking like I was involved, like I wasn't about like that. When I was younger, I remember there was like almost a respect and like you had like hood legends and stuff. But now it's like people are just kind of just like, whatever, like what have you done lately? Like who even cares about what you did back in 1990, so or 2014, like it's 2019 now, like what have you done? And it's mad. And I think it's interesting because the very first time you kind of see Deshane is him getting triggered by someone who said like, oh my gosh, Deshane was a legend. And it's like, Deshane is triggered by people saying that, like, you used to be a legend, that like, you used to be the man, like, what happened? Instead of him to kind of see it, it's like, you know what, it's time for me to kind of let go. You'd think his cousin getting shot like that. Poor, poor Donovan, man. Ah, oh, poor Donovan. You'd think his cousin getting shot like that would have, um, really sparked a change in him, his mum's not even talking to him, but no, all he cares about is to be back on top, needs to be back on top, it's like, have you learnt nothing, son? That's all I really have to say, kind of, about Top Boy. Oh, a couple of points, I like, um, I really like Jack's character, even though she gets on my nerves, but I like Jack's character, I think the actress did a really good job, like, and I think, and what I like, it's going to sound so weird, I like that Jack's character, they kind of explored the fact that she is, in fact, a lesbian, and she does like girls, but as long as I feel like, You'll have these um, characters sometimes that are like tomboyish girls or like stud studdish type of girls, but you never really explore the fact that they probably date girls. Like, it's weird, like, I like how they've kind of gone into that. And um, yeah, like, I like, I really like that they show like the girls at the top and stuff. Um, <coughs> yeah, I really like that. And I kind of like how through Jack and the other guy who Jack works with, I can't remember his name. They kind of show like how kids are groomed into this life as well which I think is a really important aspect to consider, like, because what these people are doing is child grooming, like, they do prey on vulnerable children and groom them. I don't care what anybody says, it is grooming, and I think more can be done to kind of protect kids in that, in that circumstance, and it should be treated as child grooming, because that is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like all I have to really say about Top Boy. Um, I probably missed a few things, but we can discuss in the comments and stuff. You guys let me know your thoughts. Um, do you agree with anything I said, disagree? Um, anything that you didn't like that I didn't kind of point out that you kind of want to discuss, let's talk in the comments, let's, let's talk. I want to get on us talking about like pop, pop, pop culture and that like, current affairs and stuff, so it's be a good kind of start. So yeah, let's, um, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Um, that's it for me, I'm going to go head out now because I'm running a little bit behind, but um, <coughs> excuse my coughing throughout the video, like I said guys, I'm ill really ill and I still came to film, I'm not expecting like an award for filming when I'm ill, I'm just saying. I did film whilst ill because um had to find out the hard way. YouTube doesn't give sick pay. Also make sure you check out Kalai Hair on your way out. Way out. Way out. Make sure you check out Kalai Hair on your way out. I'll have all the links in the description box and stuff. Um one question I always forget to answer when people ask that like, one question. One thing I always forget to cover is who the hell was shipped by. So they shipped the Deepex. Hair came to me in about four days or so, so standard time. But yeah, check out Kalai Hair for this gorgeous, gorgeous hair. Links in the description box, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Let me know if you like videos this as well. Actually, that would really help me. But yeah.
Bye.